Thank you, Roy, for that terrific introduction. I'm so pleased to be representing the Jeffrey Bean Foundation and to have the opportunity to sit with the three of you today, at least virtually. I was scheduled to provide a brief introduction to each of you for an in-person awards event for Research America a little more than a year ago before the pandemic hit and our world changed. There is no silver lining to COVID-19, but I'm so glad and truly honored to have the opportunity to go beyond introductions and to have this conversation with the three of you. I have a single question that I'd like to pose to each of you in turn. Thinking back on your esteemed careers, what advice do you wish you had received along the way? And what would you tell early career researchers wanting to follow your fields and follow in your footsteps? Paul, uh, maybe you'd be willing to go first? Um, sure. I guess the um, what I would have loved to have heard was um, just uh, trust your instincts and do what you enjoy. Um, I, um, I think I did ultimately do all that. I just did it with uh, sort of my sort of heart in my throat because I was really never quite sure I was doing the right thing. I mean, I was, I was uh, you know, a, a psychology and English major in, in college, um, you know, didn't have any discernible skills. I couldn't act. I, you know, couldn't play a musical instrument. So, you know, medical school seemed like a reasonable idea. Didn't really know what I was doing or why, but um, and then I thought I, well, I would be a pediatrician. I mean, I, I didn't did residency in, in pediatrics, you know, and, and enjoyed all sort of the infectious disease people who I had known, like like Mike Levine, for example, and Ellen Wald, and Richard Hornick, and Ted Woodward. Um, so that sort of moved me in towards infectious disease. Still, I imagined I would be a, a general practicing pediatrician, um, but 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 when I then finished uh, residency, I did you know a, a uh, fellowship in infectious disease, and 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 did basic science research for, you know, 26 plus years um, without ever having done any research before that. None, not in college, not in medical school, never. And, and I just enjoyed it. It was fun. But I was always worried that I was picking a relatively insecure uh, job. But but uh, I think that's that's what I learned was just do what's fun. And, you know, and for that and the person who should have told me why that was Michael. Bean, but he but he, he sort of modeled it, you know, because he clearly was doing what was fun, which was work in the developing world. And the same thing with Dr. Nabel. So um, they, they modeled that behavior for me. So I guess nobody really needed to tell wow, me. Wow, that. that's uh, super uh, inspiring. Uh, Maybe the most natural thing is to turn to Mike and ask him the same exact question, but maybe you can add to the things that Paul already resonated that he took from you and what else you could actually add uh, for the next generation of leaders in our field. Well, th thank you. Um, and, and thank you for your words, uh, Paul. Uh, like Paul, I didn't know I would end up uh, uh, having a, a long career in research one uh, message I would share is whatever uh, the young in investigator is thinking uh, will be the trajectory. Uh, do not estimate the role of luck in influencing exactly uh, what you accomplish and what you end up doing. And uh, you'll have good luck, you'll have some bad luck. It's, it's part of the life experience as well as the research experience. The second message, uh, that I have is that when you get into research and you're in the hunt uh, to, to drill down, uh, to find the answer to a scientific question, you're thrilled by it, you get deeply immersed, you need to be careful that you don't overdo it. And the antidote is to learn not only to work hard, but to unwind with equal ardor. There's someone who commented on love of work and uh, recognition of the importance of vacation and periodic breaks, and that was Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis, who said that he could do 12 months of work in 11 months, but not in 12 months. And I love that, that statement because it, uh, it, it points to the, the balance and how time uh, away from work, even though you, you love what you're doing, recharges the human battery and actually leads to enhanced uh, uh, productivity when you when you return. That's great. Thank you so much for that, Mike. And uh, we'll turn to you, Gary, and I'll just say before asking you the same question, I think um, knowing your career journey a little bit, you know, that you've been able to have an impact in different spheres. Um, uh, it'd be great to get your perspective on how you've uh, done that journey and what you've learned and what you would tell uh, people younger than you 
who are uh, earlier in that journey and what your perspective is. Ross, thank you. Uh, and thanks to Mike and Paul for their wise comments as well. Uh, you know, when I uh, look at what, what I've been able to do in my career, I think the best piece of advice that I would follow is, is one that I, I read when I was in Washington, D.C., uh, where uh, I was at the Theodore Roosevelt um, uh, Park in Washington. And there's an inscription on the, one of the statues in the park which says, uh, keep your eye on the stars and your feet on the ground. Uh, it was uh, a quote from Teddy Roosevelt. And, you know, as I thought about what I was doing then and as I think about what I uh, have done professionally, I think it's really great advice for a scientist uh, and a young physician scientist. We all have to get our work done. Uh, we all have to get our grants. We all have to publish our papers. We all have to keep our feet on the ground in terms of moving the science forward. But if you don't keep your eyes on the stars, you can sometimes get mired down in uh, some of the more uh, mundane aspects of the work. And particularly for those of us who work in vaccines, uh, those are our stars. That, uh, that That's our opportunity to impact on a broad universe of people uh, in ways that um, we sometimes might not have imagined when we started our careers. So, so I think that's uh, something that I always try to carry along with me. The other piece of advice I would pass along is one that was given to me by my uh, postdoctoral mentor, David Baltimore. When I left the lab, uh, I sat down with David and I said, David, do you have any advice for me as I start my career? I was a postdoc at the time. And uh, David said, no, you, I don't have any advice for you. You, uh, you. you learned how to do science here and you, you just go out and do it. And then there was a little pause and David said, well, but there is one thing. And I, and I said, yeah. And he said, don't hire good people. And I said, what? He said, yeah, don't hire good people. He said, hire great people because the good people will do the things that need to be done, but they're not gonna give you the breakthroughs and you're not gonna lead them to the breakthroughs. And if you fill up with people who are good, but don't have that inspiration and that willingness to go beyond the ordinary or even beyond the good, uh, you, you, you will often miss the opportunity to go to great. So I think that uh, that's another good piece of advice. Every time I have strayed from it in my professional career, I've regretted it. So uh, I hope that's something that's useful to others. Wow, that is uh, extraordinary words that I will certainly take to heart and I think everybody uh, will. I'll just say two things. One is a personal uh, thanks to each and every one of you for all you've done uh, for the field uh, and your leadership uh, in science broadly and in the vaccine field. Uh, we've never seen greater moment uh, for impact. And I think you really exemplify the idea that the ability of science to help human health and the power of science and what we all need to do to be part of that and to support it and what it can do, uh, what you've done, and the way you've paid for all of us. I thank you for that. And I'm really appreciative that we're all on this journey together. Thank you so much.